either brought to the board as something that's not achievable or something that is. Uh, was that a cell phone? It's a free app on cell phones that allows students to identify current situations immediately. And then they're reviewed. Also, I would like the board to continue its safety and security shame meeting so that we can feel comfortable that we're up to the minute in our own processes for safety and security. And then, safety and security and transportation. Ongoing um, are the stops that are either being added or eliminated, crossings and transportation safety courses for our students, making sure that they know how to safely get entrance to a bus, not walking across the streets, and the exit to our buses. And the others are all teacher student achievement related. Um, I would like to see, as I've read, uh, a time element allotted for teachers, a minimal of time allotted though for teachers, say 15 to 20 minutes for them to have daily collaborations within their departments. Um, in the Golden Triangle, I would like us to continue the pursuit of the magnet school. And um, collaboration of the achievement goals, the whole school, the classroom, and the community. Yeah, that one. Collaboration of achievement goals. One, two, three. The whole school, the classroom, the community. Would you repeat that? I'm sorry, one more time. One, two, three. The whole school, the classroom. like to emphasize the sharing of academic support from the teacher to the principal and sharing has to be easily and timely achieved. I have a concern when it comes to achievement that our students are prepared for keyboarding on tests and how we're achieving that and I technology training in itself too for our teachers. Okay, because okay. I think I've missed a couple of things there that you had. Um, I got sharing of academic support between teachers and students, between keyboard training and students. And, and then next training. to bring our scores up is to make sure that our students are keyboarding accurately and quickly so that um, the scores aren't lessened because of the error. And the technology training we supply to our teachers some kind of fidelity check that everyone is from the district down using the technology that's available because we've spent a lot of money. And continue the efforts on reading, reading across the board and in every opportunity. That's it. And all that's the case. Very good list. Thank you. The last one is that reading making sure that we're reading at every opportunity, that every down moment is not a staircase down the middle of the reading. We're watching movies right here. Okay. Bill. Yeah. I obviously did not say I'm over the fun. So I'm just going to speak about what I That's all I want you to do. What, what do you want to see done? Yeah. What the biggest we, concern for me is the culture of the school. As a board member, I would want us to foster a culture that allows um, um, for positive things, or that the staff was comfortable they could present a view uh, before we make a vote. Um, with that said, I also would like to see a mechanism where the employee comfortable that they can, I don't want to use the term whistleblower, but if they have a concern that they can share it, not a, we have a box, I guess, in the district office, but it could be a mechanism
others who have a consumer and, and potentially say this, that I view my job as policy and be supportive of the mission of the superintendent and your staff. I mean, I really do. And how can I be more supportive? This is more about me. Is what would you want from me? Like, if I call it by you, you just need to say, and I'm okay with it. Or, you know what I mean? And, and staff needs to be able to say, great example, I, I enjoy going to this call, is that, that she's going to tell me if I'm off base, or you know, and that everyone should have that same feeling, that, um, and the idea that you serve at the will of the board, that culture, I think needs to change because we serve y'all, and you know what I mean, we want to be supportive, that's just my opinion, I don't know how you you know, when I've had that conversation with Dr. Moxley before, people will tell me things instead of going straight to her. They're afraid of retaliation, that something's going to be done because they brought something forward. And I said, if you've gone to your supervisor and nothing's been done, I see nothing wrong with you going to Dr. Moxley. Now, I don't know what Dr. Moxley, you know, how she would want to handle, because there are procedures and you're supposed to go to your, your boss. And if you don't get what you want, I mean, it's the same thing at most government agencies. I've been through this. If you don't, get the answer you want, you go to the next step. Chain of command. Right, the chain of command. And the, the staff here does feel that there will be retaliation. They'll get reprimanded or, you know, somebody will stab them in the back if they come out and say something that they need to say. I've gotten that since I've been here the whole time. But I don't know how you address it. That's a culture change, just like you said. They've got to feel that it's an open situation and just because I don't agree with somebody else, I'm not going to be in trouble. I don't, that's a whole culture change. Yeah. And I do think there is, a, you know, a chain of command, and I think there's a balance there. I think um, the employees, you know, I want it to be right. That's the bottom line. I want it to be right for the district. But in being right for the district doesn't mean that I always get my way. And that there, there are decisions that are made sometimes that are for the good of the district, but it may not necessarily be what I want it to be. And so people have to understand, all of us have to understand that, me included that you know there are decisions that are made and it means that are made and and they may not always be made the way i want it to be or not sometimes they are sometimes they aren't so you've got to have that balance there but i also think and what i hear from what both of you have said is that we need unfiltered information to make good decisions and sometimes the person that is on the front line doing the job they are the ones that have the exact information that we need and sometimes we don't get that unfiltered information so that's when it gets frustrating because we make decisions based on the information we have at a time when in essence the one that really has the information didn't feel comfortable coming forth because they're afraid of the reprisal. The boots on the ground are going to be your, your greatest resource mm -hmm. and, and I get a sense in my one or two months of the case that we don't utilize that. <laughs> that and, and I think it's a huge opportunity lost. I started working on a program, and I'm not certain if it's us or not. And I also, it also has become apparent to me that academic achievement is directly correlated with principal involvement. And if we could reach out to the community and start a program with the, um, I actually know the Black Ministry Alliance of Houston, and start a program where we can offer GED studies in their community churches, and they were all over it. Now, being fair, um, this was more of a MoTeC uh, coordination. I had that meeting, and then I mean, went on the board got sidetracked. But if y'all could help me with that, we're going to superintend it. Because I think ultimately we reach the parent, we engage them, and then they're going to be engaged. And that's all for me. Thank you. Very good.
from that one development until the end of this school year. We need to have conversations soon to say, what are we going to do next school year? I don't want to wait till the end of the school year and then you know, parents aren't notified and then we have a repeat of what we had this past year. So I want to make sure that we that we do that uh, properly and communicate it um, very well. With regards to the culture of the school district, I think it's important for the culture of this school board. In the past, we have gone through master board training. We did not do that. And I would like to see that um, after this next election, that we look at next spring of this board or whoever is seated on this board to go through master board training. There is a lot of good that comes out of it. It's not always tangible, but it also teaches each other our learning, you know, styles, our teaching styles, and what have you. And I think that uh, we could help reduce, you know, some of the things that have happened um, this, this past that this past year. Another one we need to be focusing on is on the sales tax and what we're going to be doing uh, there. At our Central Florida School Board Coalition meeting. February, that is the topic, and the 10 districts are going to be talking about best practices because other districts have theirs um, getting ready to sunset. So that's one that we, I feel that we need to um, put some attention to. Um, another one is identifying, I know we have our legislative priorities, but we need to really see how we can tie that into what is going on in Tallahassee. Some of you probably saw the headlines in the newspaper the other day that the legislature is going to focus on making bullying, um, you know, that, that, you're break, that you're breaking the law. Okay, well, what, what is that going to mean? Is there a way that we can tie that into the programs that we're already doing or the, you know, the things that we're doing? Because, you know, are, are they going to decide what a first offense is and what's going to happen the second offense? I'm just not sure on some issues if they really come to the superintendents and if they come to the school board association to get you know, and help or information that needs to be gathered before they make their their decisions. And that's one that just you know I saw in the newspaper on, on Sunday. Well, Dr. Montley and I have a meeting with Representative Metz on Friday, okay. so I'll bring that up. be very helpful and I think the same thing is as other issues come up um, and the, the testing it is a big one we're all trying to figure out what's, what's, what's next um, next year and it's pretty um, frustrating when we don't know what the, the new testing mechanism is going to be but there has to be you know one in place and what's that mean? and you know we've mentioned engage LCS and I think so much of what the strategic plan ties in with that plan and I think we just really need to stay focused with, with both of these and make sure that what we're doing does it coincide uh, with these two plans. Okay going back to your sales tax we do have on the agenda for the workshop to discuss that we're going to have Deanna here Newman and Harry's going to be ready to discuss the different uh, funding sources that would be available to, for us to discuss. So that's on our work on the 27th next week. And then we'll have that information from a board discussion then to take with us to Central Florida School Coalition. Okay. All right. And, and one that I didn't have, you know, with, with technology. Technology is ever changing, but with the due testing that's going to come on, I know that we don't have all that we could have with technology. So I think we need to make sure that what we're doing that the technology is part of that and that we have the funds to be able to uh, go along with it. Triangle area that Ms. Fisher brought up. 
Uh, there's also a STEM grant that we got presented to us in the Leesburg and Houston community. The food allergy program, which Ms. Fisher brought up, we need more education on that for our people. Uh, the allocation formula needs overhauling, and that's part of the engage. Um, the white fleet updates, we need to figure out what we're going to do. You need to slow down because of poor Kathleen. I got it. I forgot. I start talking.
would be great to go through those um, and actually that gives them time to look at them to see which one seems to be and some of them I, I wrote down that we need to have some more board dialogue on what that means because that came from one of you but yet um, does everybody have a full understanding of what that means does the staff have a full understanding of what your thinking is and what your vision is of what you see that looks like because I do find from time to time that we do have a lapse of communication and that causes um, some friction. Bill? This is almost exactly what I was talking about. It may be on all face and I'll be corrected by this retreat. But we put the list out there and legitimately, and it's, it's really polite when you go, what do you want to do? I mean, you know, you're, you're trying to serve the will of the board again. That for me personally, if you took the list and you evaluated it and you went back and said, we don't have time to do this right now. It's going to stay on the watch list. That, yeah, I, I mean, and, 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 and what I'm saying, and what I'm saying is, is again, I want to support what you can do, right? And then, rather than you saying, what do I want? What I want to do is serve the district, right? And that be, but you're running it day to day, so you have an idea. And if we throw a, a cog in that we want to change, I don't know what you know what I'm saying? That, uh, you why, have the capacity, not me. Why it is very important to have this open for all of us to hear the same thing. Because where we get in a real dilemma is when we can have conversations with each one of you. And each one of you have projects and ideas and initiatives that you'd like to see that are really good for the district. But <coughs> when, we, when it requires, if it's a major project, it requires a lot of staff time then the staff is doing that, they're not doing something that another board member may want. That's when it gets into, and why you see that culture of we serve at the will of the board. And it, it puts staff in a very bad spot when they're, they're doing something for one, but they're not doing something for the other. And then all of a sudden we're not doing anything well. So this conversation is very good. What I would like to do is take the list Natalie, type it up and let us go through and now give you some perspectives of this is what it will take to get that initiative started and what it will take to bring it to fruition. How much time is estimated and then come back <coughs> and we prioritize so that all of us are on the same page because I don't want anyone to think that we don't want to do your project, but I also know that we don't want to make it. But I'm way okay with you saying, Bill, I'm working on this. And for, yeah. for another board, you don't have to say that it's coming. As long as everybody's okay, we have to watch. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Good with it. But, and, and then, but it's that, okay, we'll take care of it. And then if you don't get back, if, if I could give a prime example, I guess that's what we're supposed to be doing here. Right. That the other day, I called Chris, and I thought it would be a great idea if we, if we put out how great the commission you know, we're supporting us on the busing thing like Mid Hill High School. And Chris says, I'll write something, I'll get back to you. I didn't hear from Chris, I didn't hear from Chris, I didn't hear from Chris, right, Chris? And when I called you, you said it got stopped. And that you stopped. Yes. Sir. And so, um, but I don't know how we went, because I was a little bit aggravated with Chris, to be honest. You should be aggravated with him. He came to me as the chair and said, I and know, I said, it, should, it should be brought up. That was, that's a decision that should be from the that we yeah. give a warm fuzzy to the to yeah. the county commission. Yeah. This works for her. For who? He doesn't work for us. It <coughs> works for her. Well, no, no, no. But if he took it, I can see that's my point. That I mean, it's a little bit petty to me. But but it's not. If if me okay. giving an idea and you took it, it was taken to the superintendent, by the way. Yes. Who then gave it to you? Well, then a simple phone call saying, Bill, we're not going to put this out. I don't even know why we're putting it out. We're not going to put it out. I'd be fine with it. The fact I didn't hear anything. I understand that. So yeah, that's just a good, that's a great yeah. example because I think that's where we all get frustrated. All yeah. of us get frustrated. Yeah. 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 But Yeah. 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 My community wants this, so they want to go. At some point, I had to come back. And at one point, it was not okay with the board. At another point, it was. And so you have to be able to bring those things back from a watchful standpoint and say, look, I'm more 
working on this and get it in front of the board <coughs> because at one time that may be acceptable another you know it's a different time it's a different focus the structure of the schools have changed and it becomes the right time so that's where it's good to have it because we do have to talk about issues where you may see see something in your district that you're working on and you need to come back and say, hey just so the rest of the board knows i am working on this i'm trying to put people in touch and that's not you know dr moxley can't go and talk to the county commission and talk to the chamber of commerce and, and talk to all of those people like the magnets so it just kind of got rolling and hey Dr. Moxley, this is starting to move and then, yeah. so but they need to know everybody needs to know there were items that
call Chris and say, Chris, there's this great event, blah, 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 then he should know straight up that it's not, I'm not talking about Philip Hyatt saying that, that it needs to be board written. And that's pretty much every time. Okay. Right? I mean, that's easy enough to explain. Yeah, I've been doing things like uh, the committees that I'm on, they've been having something like New Beginnings. Uh, and I send them to him, and he decides whether it's appropriate to be sent out, but it's not for me. It's just for him to send out to all the principals in the south end of the county, right. so they know this free clinic is coming on. You know, it's not it's not about me, and that's the way I read it. No, I read and the same that's way. I, stopped it. Okay. I read the same way, and, and so I totally got why why he stopped it. Okay. It was had there been a communication back, it would have been no. We really wanted had I had I had it been sent to me, I would have went. James, no, no. I kept looking for the announcement in the press, and I was glad when I saw it appear on our site, and then I was also glad when I saw it in the press. It, as far as the teachers are concerned, and our teacher representatives, our candidates that are finalists, that to me is super duper timely important, and I was glad to see that come out. I think that if I want to write a letter to the editor or take my time as a board member under reports, then that's Kylie speaking. All the rest of the time, I would hope everybody in here would understand that I'm calling Chris or I'm calling the superintendent with an item that I think is worth it. And that's, that's all I can say about it. That's what you do. This is worth it. <laughs> On the trip.
what happened was I wanted him because the county the commissioner just go down and tell them what they want to do and I wanted him to write an article for me and he said Debbie you can't do that I can't do that that's not what Dr. Mock would be I mean so it's been done to me before that's why I didn't want to stir that up again because now we were like the attempt I didn't even see the draft you know what I'm saying yeah I know and, and that was never my intent the right. attempt was to appraise those three commissioners that's where my head was at and we can and write a letter like that if you want no 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 <laughs> and we can get that done. Yeah. I mean, we well, can get well, that done. Well, now it's kind of lost its But No, not really, because they're still discussing what they're going to do with the penny, and that was what I was asking him about today. Because yeah. they said to us that day that they were going to, Leslie wanted to work it in as part of theirs, putting the sidewalk side plan in there so it was done after, but not. Well, not one, not to Roseanne, but not one to Mignola. Because Mignola has that hand cocking stick. Yes, and it won't be done until 2016. So, so I can tell you both of you that right this minute that I'm going to be going back to the county commission and get a speaking to them about it. Your district, you need to that's my district. Them. That's right. So. Oh, and, and I agree, but uh, my my point was, well, let's do things sooner than later so that we don't have history repeating itself. Because if we didn't learn from the first time, yes, then shame on us. Well, <coughs> on the 27th. And that's where, on that particular item, that needs to come back. And I think I've said this, that you know, we need to look at not just the middle school, high school, but the elementary school, and how they work together, you know, as a group, and timing, and which comes, you know, which comes first and all of this. I think you have a bigger conversation on that one. And it's not just a tickle issue. That is a, well, we need three or four, you know, four workshops to get through that so that we have long-term plan that's communicated up front, well in advance, and we're all comfortable with it. And with Engage LCS, and I won't say this, with even all of this stuff, even if I didn't have any priorities, Engage LCS is going to be the part that's going to be the driver. And I know we have capacity, and so I don't want to get to a point where we're taking that capacity away, because eventually that's going to take care of a lot of, a lot of these items. So, you know, we need to be cautious of that, and that's where you need to come back and say, look, this is what we can do, and not get to the point where, oh, yes, we can do it. We ran into that whole bunch. We'll get this done. If we can't do it, we need to be told we can't do it in, in no uncertain terms. I mean, you know, that, I feel we made a bad decision on that. It was something that we needed to have that conversation. Those are, you know, from, from my standpoint, academics come first, and along with the engage LCS. And if nothing else, you know, just, just so we're clear, if there wasn't another party on there, I'd be comfortable with it. And as long as the academics and the engage part are moving forward, don't worry about any of my others, but. Yeah, you, that's on record, right? I mean, I'm talking about that, but. I'm just, well, no, I mean, it, it is one that. You know, we need to, as a board, we need to understand that everything that we have, whether we add it to, you know, to the agenda for a, for the uh, monitor or for, you know, transportation or for anybody else, that's going to pull away from our overriding goals of the case of yeah. Right. And so, I mean, I, I just want to be sure that you guys know that I do recognize that. I'm fine with the back of the Kind of when I see this, it's kind of like back away from these, back away from some of this stuff, and go do what you guys need to do, and then come back. Uh, and, that, and I guess that's my concern. You're overloaded, and we have budget. And I don't want, I don't want the board. I don't want to be part of a board that overloads you guys, because I think that what you're doing is, is important for us in the long term, long after all of us. I think, I think we need to find out where the connectivities are because I think there's ways to integrate um, some of the things you have. And in the past, too, we had sheet stuff like we've done as far as school boards meetings. We tried to find commonalities. There are commonalities in our wishes here today. Right. And they do fit within these. So we've done right well there, I think. I, I think that um, so there are connectivities areas that we can we can bring together and there's some uh, common ground there. I think um, 
capital plan. So that engage um, LCS talks about program evaluation, which is part of you know our deployment of resources, and then we have the capital budget. So I think we need to have some very strong discussions about the capital budget along with engage LCS, and then I think you have the full full circle with that. Um, there. there were two areas that I wanted, if I may, um, to talk about to possibly adding to the list. Um, there, one came up, and I believe Dr. Howard and Mr. Stone, you brought it up about the TV marketing piece. Um, there is another arena, and Chris has brought it up to the table on executive cabinet about advertising. And we have been very, 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 very conservative about advertising. I, um, and, and I have held that view too. I am starting to come off of that because I've watched other school districts uh, do some increased advertising and, and taking advantage of some advertisement opportunities that have been pretty benign as far as a distractor and they have filled some uh, financial gaps by increasing some revenues to do some projects that have had great impact. Um, I know Orange County and Chris has done some and that's Seminole County. Um, I, since we are going to talk about the um, TV marketing, I was wondering if we could talk about both of those, um, if that is a point of discussion. If, you are, if you're philosophically um, not in, interested in going into <coughs> discussion with that, then I certainly will leave it off the table, but um, I have really kind of opened a little differently my viewpoint on that, um, just because of the success in some other districts. My right is actually a TV. Oh, okay. I mean, the marketing okay. part, and yeah. you know, whether it is whether it's internet marketing or whether it's um, there's a ton of them out there that can do that. Um, there's something called decision force that's moving around like that right now, and that's what actually drives if somebody's <coughs> out there, you know, they're buying something from Amazon or they're looking at something that's school related. If you say something along the lines of other people have clicked here, and you can actually drive people to our website. So, so there's some other things that are going on out there that are being in <coughs> business that aren't expensive, um, but we could use as a driver for all of those, you know, to bring people in so they understand what we're doing. Right. And in using technology, does it breach anything that Dr. Through that, you have to get those interdependencies together. Right. Like Decision Force uses email, it uses your existing email um, account. It will grab what people are doing who are in your area and help push them there. You know, it shows the little advertising. People who looked at this also looked at this, or people who bought this also bought this. And it's just a new, it's a fairly new marketing tool. I'm not probably going to use it in my office. Um, but it, it's really starting to be used in Central Florida and it's very new. No, it wouldn't affect what Dr. Wheeler's doing so because the security it would, has, has been no, no, because it'd be driving one to okay. the Facebook. It could drive it to Chris's, right. you know, which Chris is already taking care of Facebook, which is completely outside. So, you know, those types of people or it could drive it to the website. Those people are coming in from an outside source. Okay. You could drive to specific items. You could offer, you know, some of the the um, in services that you do. You know, people who are who are looking for, and I know you've got some things with all. Right. If they're looking on that, that in service may actually be driven into front of, in front of them. Oh, well, hey, I want to see this. And they have to do so. yeah. It could open those <coughs> avenues up. Um, I think there's some really neat possibilities that are out there that we can tap into. And um, we also have become aware, like, I uh, was talking about our, the box stores, Walmart, those kinds of things, um, will sell cool uh, logo things. We can be getting. Now they're in more 
of an urban setting, but at least it would give us an opportunity. So if you're open to that discussion, I wanted to add that to the list. Um, the other area, this is a concept and, and uh, one of the items we've talked about internally, um, and, and I've had some conversations with Dr. Christensen because he was involved in this um, where he was before, is a regional concept. And looking at our district, because our district is so long and narrow that um, there is some productivity and efficiency and looking at um, our district from a regional concept, whether it's a three region, and we started this conversation as a fisherman. Yeah. Um, we're here when I first came on board with the learning right. So we did it from an academic um, differentiated accountability thing, but there is, and when we were talking about math at school, that gets into that school of choice, and there's really a, an emphasis now on that school of choice concept. With us looking at blended learning, personalized learning, moving to a regional concept may open up some a greater opportunities for our students and allow us to take advantage of some greater efficiencies um, in operational aspects as well as learning opportunities as well as uh, deployment of resources. I don't believe that we can any longer look at things in confined by a school building. Um, I think we're going to find ourselves being locked in and we'll be spending money that frankly we're not going to continue to, to get increased revenue. So it was my way of thinking of a new model of allocating resources, not necessarily school by school, but I think we're going to have to look at it program by program, region by region. I think it gives us some greater flexibility. Um, I know that leaves big question marks in your mind of what exactly that means. Um, I don't have all the answers, but I do think there is some, some point of discussion and some creation uh, that we have within the parameters. So, if, uh, those were two items that I had on my list that I think um, may have some connectivity with what you want to do <coughs> and with all the other things that we've already talked about. So, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Did we want to add impact fees at all to that list? I didn't think it fit, but since we put sales tax, do we think we Well, that's going to be part of that discussion on the 27th. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying it, but I'm just asking. You can go back to where the sales tax Yeah, 
Others, thanks for all the time. We are going, yes ma'am, we are. Uh, the next, uh, anybody else got anything else on this one? We'll move on. Okay, I thought that. Superintendent's conference. Yes, I do have one comment that I want to put into the record uh, for members. As you're aware, the district received a complaint regarding class size reduction at a school which was um, investigated by Mr. Johnson. While the initial complaint was unfounded, during the investigation, there were some sketching irregularities that were brought to my attention. Once I noticed um, and became aware of these irregularities, I immediately contacted the Department of Education to determine the correct course of action to submit any data corrections that might be necessary since the district is in the window for data edits um, for FTE and class size. Scheduling decisions were made at the school level and in context of class size uh, reduction caps to minimize classroom disruption and to do what is academically sound for students. Unfortunately, some of the scheduling decisions resulted in incorrect class size reporting. That class size reporting as of today has been corrected and we have submitted data corrections to the Department of Education. A compliance plan for any impacted school corrections is required to be certified by this board and that will be submitted to the EU um, at the next regularly scheduled board meeting, which will be next Monday. Those certified compliance plans must be in DOB by February 1st. These compliance plans um, will be transmitted, um, and the data corrections that we have now submitted to DOE represent less than a 0.1% of the total FTE reported in October, so it's a small amount. DOB will determine any class size penalties for school districts across the state that have classrooms over the cap, class size cap sometime after February 1st. Um, so that, that just tells you the timeline. I am continuing an internal review of any corrective action related to class size reporting for future reference. So I just, that's the only comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else? I don't. Okay. Board member comments. I have a, I have a question. A workshop scheduled for February 3rd? Uh, we do not, and the reason <coughs> we do not is that that particular day is the day that our principal of the year for Lake County and our assistant principal of the year for Lake County are being recognized in Orlando by the Commissioner of Education, and both the chair and I will be um, attending that. That is a um, 12 o'clock, I think, um, ceremony. Yeah, that's that great. I okay. did see yeah. on the last. Uh, news release that went out that there was a workshop. We were we were scheduled, but I'm going to be in Tallahassee, so I was going to tell you that's good for you. Yeah, that's, that's good okay. for me. So I wasn't going to be there. I'm going to be up in Tallahassee. So <coughs> that's even better. So I will not miss the workshop. No, you won't. Routine okay. Routinely, that's when we would have a workshop. Right. Um, but because that came in after that, um, we will be canceling that. So thank you for bringing that up. And also, we will not ever have a workshop on the first regularly scheduled board meeting Monday. Um, at this point in time, we have done those in the past, um, but we will not do to the Central Board of School Board Coalition. It's just That's impossible no for us to get back. I knew there wasn't any right. I never know. And so, in, uh, it is a challenge for us coming up because, like this month, we didn't have a workshop opportunity yesterday. That's why we have to have one next Monday. We won't have one on month, the first Monday, which is normally a workshop day. We won't have one on the second Monday because that's the Central Florida Coalition. And then in February, the third Monday is a non-school day. It's a holiday. But 12 months people, we are working, so I do have one scheduled for that day if we need it. But I also know that it's a long weekend for everybody. That is a holiday weekend, and it would be at the pleasure of this board if we had items that needed available. That's yet to be determined. No, but we made, I made sure that when, we, when I got on here, I knew that you had those meetings that Patty goes and Dr. Moxley goes, so that would be an active day. That's no problem. But then we have to make, like she said, concessions. We may have to have them on a Tuesday or something else if we need them. You okay with that? <laughs> okay, Mr. Matthias. I'd just like to say I thoroughly enjoyed this retreat, even though I still
still don't understand what the difference is between that and the workshop. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I got snacks, so that's you got snacks. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.